Hey, I'm Jason Heiner, and welcome to another episode of Cracking Open. With me, we've got our Cracking Open expert, of course, Bill Detweiler. Uh, this is, as always, a partnership between Tech Republic and CNET, and this time, we're cracking open one of the more popular drones, the, sometimes called the selfie drone. Bill, tell us about what we're gonna do today. Yeah, so we've got one of the smaller drones, uh, the DJI Spark. Uh, this came out in 2017, and it's sort of, it's just above maybe the toy category for yes. drones. It's sort of an entry-level drone. It costs, it retails, I think, for $399, yep, right. but it's down to about $299 right now. And if you're looking for a drone that's just slightly above maybe a $69, $79, or $150 toy, this is kind of a good option. And we thought it would be really cool to show people the tech inside these drones that goes into keeping them stable, that goes into taking photos, and letting you control them. Sure, and we'll talk a little bit, as you're gonna crack this open, yep. we'll talk a little bit about the difference between this drone um, and some of the other drones that DJI uh, has to offer. They now offer three drones under $1,000, this being the least expensive. You can typically pick this up at a street value of three to $400. Yep. Um, and then all the way up to the DJI Mavic Pro at about $1,000, 999. Yep. DJI uh, has become the leader in this category, especially in consumer, prosumer drones. And um, they are based out of China. As we know, they started out making gimbals, uh, which is the, uh, the stabilizer that, that the camera turns on. That's what they really know how to do really well. And that is the key part of these drones. So as we take it off, we're gonna talk a little bit about what makes these drones um, so useful and, and easy to fly. Yeah, so we've taken the battery off. Uh, there are some screws here. Um, uh, that hold the plastic uh, body together. Uh, these are Torx screws. So you'll wanna make sure you have a, uh, I think I'm using a T1.5 uh, to remove these screws. What, these, once we remove these screws, we're gonna be able to pop off uh, the top cover here, this plastic okay. top cover. And that's one of the nice things, you can see one of the screws fell out there. <laughs> that's one of the nice things about these drones is that most of them are designed to be repaired because they, they, they understand that you know, you're probably gonna crash one, you're probably gonna break one, you're gonna break the propeller so you get extra ones of those. So I'm actually gonna, to keep us from breaking the propellers, I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. Nice thing about the uh, Spark here is it has uh, these little quick release uh, propellers, so you push them down, they're spring-loaded. Uh, you push them down, you remove them. I have the screws uh, removed from the bottom. You can kind of get a shot here. They use two different types of screws. So here they have, in the middle, they have these Torx head screws. Okay. But on these screws here, they'll have a hex head. You just have to be prepared uh, that when you take these devices apart, um, you, you have the bits that are the right size, that you have the bits uh, that fit the screws, and usually there's a lot of information online to do that. So now that I have the um, screws removed, and we're gonna take off the last propeller here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start trying to pop off this plastic housing now. Very good. Um, we're gonna try and be gentle uh, and not break it. I'm gonna start at the back here, and I'm gonna use, we have several different types of plastic tools, these little plastic spudgers here. These are really great. Um, you can use modified guitar picks. You could use something metal if you wanted, and I have metal tools too. But for, for depending on how um, sturdy the plastic is, will depend on whether or not I, um, you know, whether or not I want to use metal or plastic. Just because uh, I don't want to break or um, uh, mar the plastic. And plastic on plastic tends to do a little bit better at that than not doing that. Yeah. Uh, the metal on plastic. So you can see. Uh, we're starting to sort of pop the cover off. We can yep. hear that. We're going to slowly work our way around. And this is going to get us into the guts of the spark. Like we say with all these cracking opens, you know, Bill sort of has the hands of a surgeon and the patience of a saint, you know, <laughs> is that you have to, uh, to not force it. No, don't force it. You can see right there, you slowly work our way around and now we can remove the plastic uh, cover. There we go. And we can see the inside of the uh, DJI drone there. So we can see a lot of the components already exposed, which is really nice. Some of the other devices that we take apart, you can't see that. We have a couple circuit, we have a, a cooling fan here. We have a couple of circuit boards here. The main circuit board is under here, a little bit of a heat sink right here. Um, and so we can now start removing those internal components. 
So as long as you have some small screw screwdrivers, you should be able to work on this uh, yourself. And I'm gonna start by removing this little uh, card up here. I believe this is the, um, the communications, the wireless communication card right here. It's hard to tell sometimes what these chips are, but from the connections, well, it's hard to tell. I can't tell for sure here, but we're gonna remove these screws. Nowadays, if you're going to work on your own electronics, go online. You can find a lot of, you know, there's plenty of tools online, specialty tools. When we first started, uh-oh, it's a hazard of the job when the little screws fell into the device. <laughs> um, so with the screws removed, I can't just lift, I can't just rip this board out. There's a connector right here. So again, when you're working inside these devices, you want to make sure that you either use plastic tools as much as you can, or um, I have ESD safe uh, tweezers, metal tweezers, uh, so that they don't, you, you, you lessen the uh, possibility of any type of spark or uh, any type of short and damage in the electrical components inside. So we're going to pop this connector loose and I should be able to lift this board off right there. Yeah. And so we can see um, this board comes off. I believe it actually has um, the uh, GPS uh, a chip in it, so it's important that it, you know, you can only go in one way, because yeah. that makes it, uh, it's important for it to be oriented correctly uh, in terms of, so the drone knows how to fly, knows which way it's for, yeah. things like that. So we're gonna lay this aside right now, and the next thing we're gonna start doing is we're gonna go ahead and remove some of these other screws and start removing uh, the, the main circuit board in here. So with all of the screws removed, these were just regular Phillips screws, lots of different sizes, lots of different lengths. So one thing you do have to remember when you're doing this on your own devices is to make sure that you either set them out in a way that you will remember <laughs> so yeah. that you know how the screws go back um, into the device and where all the pieces go, or take some time to take some photos as you go along. Uh, you can see there's a lot of technology in this drone, clearly. Uh, from, from all the chips that you're taking out. And it does some really interesting things. This is a drone that you can fly just based on gestures. So you can have the drone, you can um, have it take off um, from your hand and give it gestures to get it in position uh, and then take uh, a photo, give it gestures to take a photo. That's, the, that's why it's sometimes called a selfie drone. Uh, you can also fly it uh, from the app, the DJI app from your smartphone. You can use that to control it. And then we've also got uh, one of the controllers. So this controller will let you take your smartphone, um, connect to this, and then use this controller to control it much more precisely. So in much more ways that the professional drone pilots uh, will do so that they you know, put this drone up higher to get exactly the right shot. Um, now you do have to keep in mind with this drone, you're only gonna get about 15 minutes of flight time. This drone, at the price though, is pretty remarkable uh, for what it can do. What I'm doing right now is there's a lot of connectors, yeah. uh, cables, these little flat, uh, flexible uh, ribbon cables, uh, yeah. flat, flexible cables. Uh, they connect, um, like I said, the motors, the gimbal, the cameras, all the, the Wi-Fi antennas to the motherboard. And so we're having to go through and disconnect all of those. And you want to make sure that you do this very carefully yeah. um, and you don't damage any of the, you know, damage any of these really light ribbon cables. They're hidden under these little metal pieces, little, little shields here. Ah, yes. um, and what, one of the things that's really interesting is there's actually a little bit of glue, <laughs> okay. which you don't normally see on a lot of these connectors, but there is just a little bit of glue here. Um, on the on these connectors holding them down to the motherboard it, it, just to make sure that you know as the device flies if you crash it as it lands the vibration in the motors you know it's tried to be insulated as best it can yeah. but that they don't come loose so right they don't shake loose yeah they don't then shake loose and then it causes a malfunction and yeah you know it, you always want to make sure that you understand the warranty information when you when you buy a device whether it's a smartphone whether it's a drone whether it's any other type of um, gadget. So if you're going to do this kind of repair, you want to make sure that you don't violate the warranty. You don't, by doing anything that would be covered under the warranty. So there's one more. I've got these two connectors uh, disconnected. A little bit of glue there. We'll pop it loose. 
There we go. These are likely for the gimbal that's mounted underneath yeah. here. We're gonna remove that in a second. Okay. So this drone, if you were to crash this drone, that gimbal isn't gonna necessarily uh, break, which is what you see when mine, yep. that gimbal was damaged when I um, crashed when yours. I crashed mine. So I had to send it into DJI for them to um, to repair that. And so we've got the motherboard or the main system board, whatever you wanna call it. We can call it a motherboard yeah. because there is a secondary board here. Uh, removed. You can see on the back, we have these large uh, metal shields and it looks like they're not soldered on. So we'll pop okay. those off and actually get to see some of the chips underneath, which is always fun. Before we do that, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's remove the rest of the components here. There's two other things that we really want to talk, that I really want to um, take apart. Okay. One is sort of this front-facing uh, sensor array that has a, the camera and the IR sensors, and then see if we can't get the gimbal apart. Luckily, now that we're inside the drone, I was talking about those torques and uh, screwdrivers on the outside. Once we're inside, it's all Phillips. Uh, which makes yeah. the teardown go much easier. So there's a couple screws here that we're gonna remove. It looks like there's a little bracket uh, here that's gonna hold the gimbal in. The screws for the gimbal are down there. There's a screw here that's holding in the front sensor array. We're gonna pop that off. There's one yep. hidden screw on the other side. I thought I had removed there you I had go. not. And sometimes that's these, you know, sometimes I've never taken this apart before. So you see it live first time here. <laughs> um, and, you know, it did come out uh, back in 2017. Yeah. Um, there we go. All right. So we can lift out the front facing sensor array. Here we have, let's see if I can, where that screw go? Lost one of my screws in the body. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, we can see here, I like to keep all the screws nice and sort of organized together. Sure. Um, you can see the front facing sensors uh, that help the drone, um, like you said, have a little bit yes. of obstacle avoidance um, and you know know how to navigate itself. We've got an IR, a pair of IR sensors here um, and then a little front facing uh, camera there. So we've got our sensor board out with that. I've already removed the screws that allow us to lift out here. It's got a little metal bar on it that holds the gimbal in place and Pull this out. These are the cables for the. Uh, I've seen you go for an hour at a times where where there will be something and you're like, I know that there there's just go. something holding that's it holding together, this, and, and I've got to find what it is so that we can release it. Yep, and, and that's what it that's is. That's the key there's to not breaking. There's it, a though. little rubber piece here. Oh, that goes with the gimbal. I don't want to break it. So, yeah, it's like a little rubber band. There okay. we go. Okay. Now that has come loose. There we go. Now let's see if we can lift the gimbal out. Is there anything else holding it in? There. No. No. Nope, All right. There so there we is. have the, the gimbal and camera assembly. It was this little piece of um, this little piece of metal here ah. uh, that was attached to this little rubber uh, rubber piece there, uh, and you can see the gimbal and uh, you know the, the front facing uh, gimbal camera assembly. Like you were talking about, that was what uh, DJI was really before they got into sort of drones. That yeah. was what they really sort of. They were a gimbal for. company for a long, yeah. long time, and that's why they transitioned pretty easily to drones because yep. this is what makes this device right here. Those slow um, uh, pans and zooms and uh, tilts mm -hmm. is what uh, gives you, and then of course the drone itself flying in, in a slow pattern is what gives you those really, really interesting shots. And so we finally, we managed to pop off the little uh, light here, because yeah. this actually does light up. There's an LED ring yeah. under these um, under these motors, so you can kind of see the drone more easily at uh, night, and it makes it cool to look at and fly around like a UFO, right? <laughs> There's a pair of screws here on this little uh, plastic uh, part of the housing, and then we can see uh, the chips uh, here, the controllers for the uh, for the motor um, and for the um, uh, the LED right there. One other thing, I'll see if I can remove this here. This is the attached to the body. You can see this is really componentized, so it's really nice uh, when you know taking these apart. When you have all these different separate components, they can be if they break, they can be replaced. It's one of the things that we really like to see. You know, they don't have manuals for this, yeah. So you kind of have to figure this out as you yes. go. Check the internet see what other hobbyists have done, see what other sites have done. Check out CNET's and so, uh, you know, YouTube channel yeah, with cra other cracking, cracking open opens. videos. So here's the bottom, here's the uh, lower. you got it out. Yeah, so here's the, the bottom sensor, right? We have, oops, dropping things all over the place. So we have a uh, lower camera here, and then we have um, the IR sensors to detect the range uh, from the ground, right? And 
Again, this is one of those things that could be damaged, it could be uh, broken, and you'd, it's nice to be able to remove it uh, individually and then replace it without having to just sort of scrap this whole uh, plastic body, right? Yes. Um, so that's kind of about it for the plastic body. Very we good. can see the cables that run to the motors. Uh, there's a few more, uh, there's a Wi Fi antennas attached here, a few more pieces of, uh, a few more cables attached to the battery contacts, and of course the motors. That's kind of about it for the body. The last there thing I want to do when we set this apart is I'm going to pop off, if I can, these uh, metal shields okay. here that protect Let's the take chips. A look. And we'll see if we can see the chips underneath. That's one of the things that we really do uh, like to do. And um, it, sometimes some manufacturers will actually uh, will solder these to the yeah. boards. And yeah. so it's a little difficult to do. It's impossible to do. Ah, there's one. Pops yeah. right off. I always... Uh, like it when it's not so that we can see the actual brains you know we can see the real chips underneath sometimes um, we learn interesting things about who makes chips for who you know the fact that um, this is how we know about all those chips for example that samsung makes for apple that mm -hmm. are often not very public um, and uh, lots of other devices too and, and that tells you a little bit about uh, those companies and how well they're doing and how some of the chip makers are doing and some of the uh, component makers when you start to uh, look up these chips, which mm -hmm. you, you will do, especially in the more popular devices, and we learn a little bit about you know who their partners are, some of which uh, is not necessarily always so public much, information. Yeah, some of which is not public. And that's why Jason and I say, you know, definitely if you're really interested in uh, learning more about the chips, uh, check out the full sort of cracking open article and gallery um, on Tech, Tech Republic uh, after this, if you watch the video, and it will have a lot more information about the chips that are in the devices. And what's really interesting, as we've talked about before, Jason, on some of our previous episodes, is that chips get reused. Yeah. We'll see chips designed for automotive use in in devices like this. We'll see chips designed for smartphones in these devices, like the GPS or the uh, tri-axis gyroscopes or six-axis gyroscopes. We'll see all kinds of dual-use products in, in these uh, in these devices, and it's really kind of interesting to see that. Yeah. So I, we've got the fan is here. I've disconnected the fan cable. Gonna try and pry it loose. There's probably a little bit of, oh, oh yep. There it goes. Comes right off, a little bit of glue holding that down um, here. We've got a little bit of a heat sink right here to help dissipate these fins, help dissipate the heat uh, from the chips underneath. I think this will, these metal shields will pop off too. Oh, yep, they sure will. Right. We'll work our way around real gently, do this as the last thing we're done. I know this is, this has been actually, I didn't expect it to be because it's pretty simple to just place, replace a rotor, pretty simple to replace a, uh, pretty simple to replace a, uh, you know, a broken, Maybe the gimbal, things like that. Uh, we can see a little bit of um, thermal paste yeah. right there. That helps conduct the heat uh, from the chips underneath. We're gonna pop these off. There's one. Ah, a more thermal ah, yeah. thermal paste there. Um, There's another chip. Oh, another we got one of our chips processor there. Processor maybe. So we'll see. We'll take this one off. Ah. <laughs> It's a flyer. Yeah. So here we've got our last um, EMI shield off here, EMF shield, and we can see the chips, the real brain sure. of uh, the DJI Spark. There's a lot of, there's still some thermal paste on there. We'll get that cleaned off. We'll take some really nice pictures, put those up on uh, Tech Republic and on CNET so that everyone can see what the actual brains of uh, the DJI Spark is. Very good. Another successful Cracking Open. Yep. All right. Remember, you can see more of Cracking Opens, all of the photos, um, all of the commentary on Tech Republic, and you can see all of the videos for all the devices that we crack open on CNET and on CNET's YouTube channel. And if you've got something you'd like to see us crack open, leave us a note in the comments. We're always looking for new things to break open, take a look at, and learn from. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.